What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about epistylus, what causes it, and what treats it. So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about epistylus. I actually heard this disease from Dan Hyde Shaw and he mentioned that it looks like ick but it's not actually ick. So as you can see here on this fish right here, he has white spots on top of his head. So what is epistylus? Believe it or not, epistylus is actually very common in aquarium and also found on many fish. It's a very opportunistic organism that feeds on bacteria in the water column and also on bacteria on the skins of fish. So they pretty much use the fish as something to hold on to while they eat bacteria from the water column. So how would you know if your fish has epistylus or ick? The main difference is that epistylus is actually pretty localized. For example, on this fish, it's only found in one certain part of the fish and that's the forehead. While in ick, it's found all over the body. For example, this fish that I found on the internet has a pistilus and it's manifesting on the tail. But of course, if you don't catch it on time, it's going to eventually just grow all over the fish's body. Another difference that I've noticed between ick and epistylus is that with ick, the white spots are very uniform in size. While in epistylus, there's small spots and then there's big spots on the fish. You will also notice that with epistylus, the white spots are actually protruding out of the fish into the water column. Another difference that you might notice is that with ick, the color is more pure sailing white, while with epistylus, it comes in a more translucent gray or whitish coloration. According to the article I've read, which I will be posting on the description below, ick is rarely found in the eyes of the fish while with epistylus, it can also affect the eye. Bottom dwellers are especially susceptible to this as well because there's a lot of bacteria in the substrate in which the epistylus feed on. So there's going to be two ways to treat the fish. The first one is to kill the bacteria that the epistylus feed on. This can be found in the water column, the skin, or the fins of the fish. And I personally prefer the systemic approach on this one, so we're going to be feeding the fish with antibiotic-laced food. I recommend this, especially if the fish is still eating. I would use broad-spectrum antibiotic because sometimes epistylus will attach itself to fish with generalized infection. So always remember, epistylus is typically an outward sign of a serious bacterial infection. So the different broad spectrum antibiotics you can use are fish mox, fish depot amoxicillin, Cchem canaplex, fish biotic ampicillin, Mardel maracin 2, Thomas Lav's fish min, and Thomas Lav's fish doxy. So I would add it to the food and then wait until like the food is absorbed. And then you can add something like garlic guard to cover up the taste of the antibiotic. Garlic guard will also make the fish more hungry because it increases the fish's appetite. I would also make sure that everyone is eating it and not just an infected fish. The reasoning behind that is that some fish will just not show manifestation of infection. And with the epistylus, you want to kill the bacteria that the organism is feeding on. So here's the result that I got from doing this medication regimen.
As you can see, the white spots have dramatically decreased in number. There's another method where you use salt to kill the parasite. In this method, you use 20 to 25 grams of salt in 1 liter of water as a salt bath. And you have to keep the fish in the water for 5 minutes. In this video, you're going to see the epistylus react to the salt solution when it was administered. You will notice the epistylus shrink in size as it gets in contact with the salt solution. As you might have noticed, this one is much faster compared to the method I used. But I still prefer the other method because that doesn't put so much stress in the fish. So it's really up to you if you want to use the salt method or the antibacterial method. They're both effective but they just have different time frame. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave a comment below if this video helped you in any way. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button and fish out.